Happy Thursday, everybody. So, okay, let's get a couple of things out of the way. I don't know how to dress. It's hot outside, cold in the office. I'm here alone tonight. Jasper um, took his niece back to Florida. She was up visiting us for the week. So I'm hoping I'm live right now. But um, So tonight we're going to discuss a couple of things. And first and foremost, I want to get out of the way is my new website is up. So you can go right on to philquinn.com and my new dates are up for the Friday night groups with Phil. So what I can tell you guys is if anybody's interested in a Friday night group um, here at my office, go online right now, buy your ticket. You, can, you don't have to deal with me like the last time because they're going to be sold out very quickly. So I wanted to get that out of the way. And lastly, oh yeah, I'm still, I have to do a photo shoot. So my old picture is on my website. People have brought it to my attention. Anyway. I have questions tonight because Jasper's not here, so I thought I would talk about some things that people get asked me or try to ask me, but I don't have time to answer them for them during the reading or after the reading because I don't want to take your time up in a reading to answer a question about the other side. So I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's staying cool. Um, I'll try to read your questions that I'm doing this, but I have 10 questions put together, and first and foremost, um, what people ask me is, how do I, how does this work for me? How do I hear and see the other side? And, it, and let me just tell you, the best way I can describe this is when you come in and you sit down in my office, your family member knows that you're coming to see me. The instant you come in and sit down and I, I try to give you my little spiel. So my spiel is what happens is people you've lost come in and as they come through, I repeat everything that they say. I have no control over what they say or how long they stay for. So then what happens is something clicks in me. I don't know what it is. It's like a trigger. And from behind you, I see what is what would look like a door to you, double door opening this way, and your family members start coming into to the office. So they're standing behind you and they start coming in kind of like a conveyor belt of souls. And they'll say, I'm your mother, father, um, sibling, whoever the situation may be. So that's that's how it works for me. Is and I see and hear them like you see and hear me. The only thing is, initially, I see them the time that you lost them. So if your parent was older, um, I would see your parent older. If your parent was younger, I would see them younger. Sometimes I have people who have passed and they look much younger than they actually are. And then what happens is, after we have established uh, the soul, meaning that you've verified this is the person that you're looking for, if the person swore a lot, that's how the soul's gonna come through to talk. If they were funny, that's how they're gonna talk. So once you verify them, then they go back to their original state, which is 33. So we're not sure why, but most souls on the other side all look 33. They look 33, so that's the best thing that I, I can tell you. But for me, that's, that's exactly how it works. Another question that I've got is, can you ever turn your gift off? So to answer that question is, no, I cannot turn my gift off. But what I can do is I can prevent a conversation with a soul when I'm out in public. And what I mean by that is if Jasper and I are out dinner, if I'm at a friend's house for dinner or wherever it may be, there's a lot of dinners involved in my life. So if that is happening, as long as the soul doesn't know I can see them, they will not speak to me. So you'll often see me look down at the ground if I'm out in public or if I'm in a situation. But as long as they don't know I can, I, as soon as I make eye contact with the other side, it's all over. They will come, they will march right up to me and they'll start talking my ear off. Phil, I need you to go over to this table. I need you to deliver this information. I need you to say this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. So over a period, and I, I, I don't invade people's privacy. It's not who I am. Um, the reason, the reason why is people have to be ready to receive information. You cannot just go up and psychically assault somebody when they're not ready to hear it because it can be traumatizing to them. So it's very important that, that we respect one another's space and when somebody's ready um, to talk about that. Um, so, and the other part of that question is, do you, see, do you see the dead everywhere at all the time? So I will see people that have passed over in certain situations, meaning that if, you're, if I go to your house for a group, all your memories are there, I'm going to see your souls um, because they know that I'm coming. But if I'm out walking around or if I go into the woods, I have encountered souls. I've encountered souls on the side of the road that have died either in a vehicle accident and or t took their life or whatever the situation may be. So, And sometimes because the soul either remains earthbound 
or cross this over to the other um, side. And I explain that earthbound and crossing over to the other side in a little, a little bit. So um, my gift is always on, it's never off, but I never walk up to somebody and say, your mother's here, your father's here, and they want you to know that message. And it's just something that I have always held with because again, the individual has to be ready to receive this information. Here's another great question. Again, this is Phil's opinion and only from my experience. That's all I can share with you guys and that's why I do Thursday nights here. So the one of the great questions that I get is, is there hell? And I know there's a lot of you out there that are better saying, Phil, you better tell me there's hell because there's people I want to go there. But what I can tell you is I have never witnessed anything from the other side that would represent hell. I've Souls cross over to the other side and one of the things that they do is they go through a soul review. And the best way I can describe it to you is the other side is made of levels. So think of it as level one through 10. The only get, way to get from level one to level two is to accomplish your contract. So if you're able to do so, then you evolve. That's how, that's how we do this. So if you have a soul, if you have a person who is here, who does what you view or society views or anybody views as a bad thing, we want to send them to hell. That's where you're gonna burn. Well, I've never witnessed anything like that, but I have witnessed souls that don't evolve and they go through their life review and they're incredibly remorseful because remember, it's not a bad soul. There's a physical, there's a physical shell that we that we inhabit. So there's DNA and there's there's environment and there's all of this, but souls are never bad. So, and I know people say there's bad souls, but in, in all honesty, everything that I've witnessed in all of these years with my gift is there's not a bad soul. There's new souls that don't evolve, but there's also souls that are just, um, they come in and they're afraid to do things and they do bad things. So um, I wanted to, I just want to say that. So as far if, as far as me ever seeing anything negative, um, I've seen demonic things, meaning throughout my life growing up but I've never witnessed another dimension known as hell. The only thing that I ever see in this office and are all my offices are the other side, which is heaven. And I would like to keep it that way, everybody. So I don't need to be seeing that. Okay, so another question that I often get, hi Katie, another question I often get is, is my loved one with me all the time? So depending on who you lose and the level of grief that you're in, your loved one tends to stay with you. When we go into the dream state, they, they hopefully try to contact us. When we're, when we're feeling sorry or we're feeling hurting or we're in grief or we're remorseful or whatever the situation may be, our family member is with us. If we're having trouble at work, if we're having trouble with a relationship, our family members are with us. And what they try to do is to comfort us and they try to give us the strength in order to move forward and not get caught up um, in the grief process. See, people think that holding on to grief is going to bring you closer to the person that you've lost. But grief is a human emotion. And what it does is it blocks the crown chakra and the third eye. So it stops you from communicating and getting, getting signs from the other side. So when the other side tells us to let go of grief, it's not letting go of the person you've lost. It's letting go of the way the person died or the trauma. So that's, it's very important because people often ask me about signs. And then the, the other part is, are they with me in private moments? Are they with me in the shower? Well, if you're in the shower and you're in grief and you're calling out for help, then absolutely yes. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the bedroom and you're having your moment, then no, the other side has no reason to be with you unless you say I need help. Um, so whatever the situation may be. So the other side is extremely in tuned to your needs, meaning that if whoever you've lost and you call on them for help and you ask them to, you know, to assist you in whatever way, shape or form, they're gonna be there. But there's no, remember the soul has no judgment of our physical body. That, that's a human thing, that's not a spiritual thing. So it, it's, it's important that we know that. Um, that they don't come through and be like, ooh, I see what you're doing. That doesn't work that way. So <laughs> I think that's very important. Um, so what does it feel and look like at the moment of death? No idea, I haven't died. No, I do. I, I, I can only tell you what I've been told. Um, and so here's what I here's what I have been here's what I've witnessed. So how does Phil witness something? Well, what happens is when you come in for a reading, your family members give me a download of information. So it's their last memories, the things they see, things they hear. If they were in a coma, they can still hear you because they can step outside the body and all of that. I'm getting sidetracked from my question is, um, does it feel like them? Oh, so the moment of passing, what happens is if you're dying of a terminal illness, let's just say that rather than a sudden death, but if you die of a terminal illness, you'll often hear the person 
talking about family members that have already passed over. They'll say they see their husband, they see their wife, they see their siblings, they see their parents, and then the following day the individual passes. So, or we'll hear them call out a name of somebody that's already passed over. So what they do is they show me what, what's happening and what's taking place. And what that, what's, do, what's going on there is the other side is preparing to help my soul, let's just assume it's me, my soul cross over to the other side. And what it's doing is, is beckoning me, saying, Phil, come this way. It's okay to leave your body. Even though the earthly part of me wants to remain you know, locked in the body because I want to survive for my family or whoever, whatever the situation may be. Mm -hmm. And then the following day, they leave. And what they see is they're, they're kicked out of their body and they see a big white light. And yes, you actually do see a big white light. And you put, and they guide you over to there. An argument would be is, Phil, you don't cross over to the, the, the white light right away because you're so frantic to give information and or contact with your family members if the death was sudden. If the death was tragic in any way, shape, or form, the, your family members will say, stay here, get through the service, the funeral, and whatnot, and give as many uh, signs to your family members as possible. So that way, at least they have some closure and or they can say goodbye. So you don't immediately cross to the other side if, if the timing is meaning your terminal, but if it's sudden, you can wait and then give as many signs as you can. So I hope that answers that question for, um, for you. Uh, and then when they do cross over, I just want to finish this up, when they do cross over to the other side is they are reunited with all of their family members. So whoever preceded them crossing over there is the person that they're going to greet and they're going to live together. They're going to do that. How do you live together on the other side? Well, it's like Earth without the war, the violence, the pollution. Everything is in its true perfection. And when it's in its true perfection... Um, we cannot be harmed. You could hold a flame to your hand because we're all energy, but yet not be burned. So when I talked in one of my previous videos is we wait for all our family members to cross over before we reincarnate and or should we come back. So going on to question seven, I think. So why do we come to Earth? Well, we've discussed this. Um, hi, Kathy. I, I got your, your message. I'll be responding to you soon. So um, why do we come to earth? Well, I think we, I just described part of heaven to you just now. And what heaven is like is perfection. So what happens when you're in paradise all the time? You get bored. And I know people sound like I would never get bored, but you do. You get bored because everything is perfect. You can't be harmed. You can't do this. So what you do is you decide that you're going to come somewhere. So that we're coming to earth and you design this contract. You look back on your previous contract and you say, ah, you know what? I could have done better at blank. I could have I could have worked harder at this. I could have done whatever it may have been. So I'm going to decide to make a new contract and come down to earth. And again, we do not come to earth solely to be, okay, I want to be a millionaire and that's why I'm coming to earth. The soul only comes here to spiritually evolve. So what it means, it means you have to confront confrontation. I will give you a simple example of coming to earth and overcoming a contract or a fear. So Jasper's niece is in town, long story short, he wants to go to Six Flags. I'm like, oh, please don't ask me to go. And he says, Phil, are you coming with us? And I said, absolutely, wouldn't miss it for the world. I did not want to go for so many reasons. But every, when I know, when I feel somewhere that I don't wanna go, I know I have to go because I have to overcome the fear. And I know it's part of my contract crowds are very difficult for Phil because if you if there's a hundred people in the room I see 500 people in the room because let's say you've all lost five people you know so it magnifies everything for me but I also knew I am in this human body I have a partner I have to be supportive and have to overcome these things and we had a fantastic day but that's an example of a contract and why we come here so it can be minor it can be major it's just it's all up to the individual and what they want to do I'm glad that I, that I went, but I wouldn't make a habit of going. So I'll just say that. So roller coasters were fun. Um, so that's, that's the reason why we come to Earth. And also, we can come to Earth. I also get this question a lot. People ask me, Phil, why couldn't I have a child in this lifetime? Or why didn't I get pregnant? Or why couldn't I get pregnant? Or why didn't I meet somebody in order to have a child? Well, part of your contract this time may have not to been happy to have children. I know that's very difficult to hear because as, a, as, a, as a, a woman and a man, you want a child. But sometimes our contracts state, you're not gonna have a kid this time. Your purpose is for something different. So the people that struggle with pregnancy and are out there, 
don't don't think that it's anything that you're doing wrong. Don't think that a soul hasn't chosen you because we've talked about souls choosing us and that's how we get pregnant. Remember, it's all based on the contract that you set up. And I think it's very important that you know that. So um, another thing that people ask me is what happens to young souls when they pass over? Either um, the soul dies after birth, or the soul dies during your pregnancy, will the soul come back? So there's two things that happen is if you're at a place where you don't want to try again, the soul remains on the other side and will continue to grow and become one of your guides and or the soul can come back. Now, what happens to people that adopt? The soul knows that they're coming for you. So it knows that it's going to go through this transition of its birth parents and then it's going to come to you. I wanted to get that out of the way because a lot of people ask me questions about that and they always think that it's something they've done wrong, but that's not the case. But souls that have um, souls that have evolved at um, have made it to the other side, stay on the other side and they want to um, help us. Kareem, just so you know, I did see your um, your message and I didn't answer because I don't have the answer yet, but I do now. It's now that I've been sitting here. Okay, moving along. Um, okay, so I wasn't going to read this question, but you know what? It's on the paper and I might as well just get it out there because I've never hidden anything from you guys before. Why do bad things happen? It's a great question, is why do bad things happen to good people and vice versa and whatever it may be? Here's the only thing that I can tell you all, and I, I'm kind of I'm kind of dodgy in, on even saying this because I don't want to upset anyone, but this is just fact, meaning that this is my truth and what I've learned from the other side through all of my readings. The truth of the matter is God does not intervene, and I know no one's going to like that, meaning that we are given free will. We come to earth given free will. Most of the time, the reason why we end up in trouble are choices and situations that we have made and, 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 and events that are talking. Hi, Jasper. I miss you, honey. And, and things that have happened. But it has nothing to do with God. When, and I know this is hard. Like we pray to God and we talk to God and whoever your belief is and all of that is, and we want them to save somebody. I remember having somebody in and the person that was dying was a priest and he traveled all over the world and all this. And he says, Phil, why won't God cure this cancer? And my response simply was, God does not intervene. Your contract was to end at this particular time so that you've helped as many people as you possibly could. I, prayers do help guys, but they also help us. You know, prayers are really for us. But if the person's contract is to end soon or does th that there, then it's, it's difficult. So here's somebody's asking a question. Shannon's asking a question. If God doesn't intervene, is there any point in praying? Yes, there's a point in praying because prayers is a sense of meditation, grounds you and does that. Just because God doesn't intervene doesn't mean that your guides and angels don't intervene, but it just means that God does not intervene. So there's not this swoop of a hand and everything is made possible. That's why we have guides. That's why we have angels, because their job is to help us and shape our way. So that's if you take God out of the situation and just look at our guides and our angels, then we see who intervenes and, and how this happens. But when I say God doesn't intervene, intervene, hi Beth, I hope you're having a good time up there. When I say God doesn't intervene, it's not that God doesn't love us or God is not with us. It's just that he allows us or it allows us to make our own free will choices. So that's the best I'm going to do with that before I get people um, hot and heavy. So are angels real? 100%. 100%. I... I I get, you know what? I'm going to tell you about my first experience with an angel. That's the only thing that I can tell you. And up until that point, guys, the only thing that I saw were souls. So two big differences. Souls are not angels. Angels are beings that are created by God that have never been in human form. So therefore can interfere with free will. They can prevent an event from happening or protect you during an event that's happening. A guide and or a family member cannot interfere with free will, but they can show you or give you signs of why you should or should not do anything. So anyway, here's young Phil. I'm at a Sarah Brightman concert, who I love, and I don't care what anybody says. And Sarah Brightman is an opera singer. She was the first um, character to play Christina Phantom, the opera. She was married to Andrew Lloyd Webber. Anyway, take me back 15, 18 years ago. And I'm watching um, one of her shows and all of a sudden behind her, and I'll never forget this. I tell this story to people who do ask me about it, is I just saw this huge set of wings, boom, open up behind her. And I thought she was getting ready to fly. And this is before we're flying, you know, around stages back in these days. So I just thought it was a really cool special effect. 
But then I realized this is not a special effect. This is there's no there's no background behind her. There's no wires. There's no nothing. And she didn't fly. She was singing a song where you couldn't fly. But these things were so magnificent and so detailed and so bright and so unbelievable that I was absolutely blown away. And it does look like the stereotypical angel wings, guys. It does look like that. There's just, just this vast opening. Now, why it was her angel, whatever, it turned out that she had things going on in her life and so on and so forth. But for me, as a medium, I got to see this. And remember, if I get to see an angel, I feel blessed because not everybody gets to see angel. Just because I'm a medium doesn't mean I get to see everything. I only get to see what the other side is going to allow me to see. So it's it's very important that you all know that. Now, that doesn't translate into if you're coming in for a reading, will my family member not show up? No, they know you're coming here. If you've lost somebody that's important to you, they are the person that's going to show up. Um, but as far as angels go, some of us have angels, some of us have guides. Oh, I'm glad you like uh, Sarah Brighton and Monica. And here's the difference. I have a guide. I do not have an angel. Sometimes angels encompass the entire family, meaning that there's one angel for an entire family. And your next door neighbors may simply have guides. So it means that either we need that person may need protection, that pay, person may, may need more help. Or that person's in a position where they're helping other people, and that's why there's these angels. But if you have an angel or a guide, it doesn't make us any more special. That's the whole thing. Because a lot of people are like, well, why don't I have an angel? I don't have an angel. And I do this all day long, and I need an angel sometimes, but I don't have no angel. But I do have earth angels. I will tell you that. I'm a huge believer in earth angels. Human beings that come into your life and change the course of your life for the better. And I have been very gifted with that, I must say. So, but my, my, my vision of an angel is how I know if someone has an angel is their aura is completely white. If the person has a white aura, I know that they, um, they have an angel rather than a guide. If someone has a gold aura, it tells me that they're pregnant, meaning that a child is gonna be born. So that was another question I wanted to get out of the way. Are angels weird? Okay. Do you feel remorse in heaven for the bad things you did on earth? You can tell that the people that are writing these questions are just like, I want to know. So do you feel remorse when you cross over to the other side and when um, and you look back? A hundred percent because you go through a life review. So you let's just say you were not a good person or, or whatever the situation circumstances may be. If you you cross over, you're stripped of all your human emotions, and now you're left with your own emotion of how the soul evolved. So at, through this life review, it can take weeks in our times, it can take months on their time, it can take years, depending on how far the individual wants to go. But they get to replay their entire life, and they look at it from third person. Is it third person? So they look at it as if they're watching a video. Okay, and it's unfolding and they're watching themselves in this and they're watching their behaviors and they're watching what they're doing to someone or a kid or their spouse or whatever the situation may be. So remorse, absolutely. I have a lot of souls come through who the first thing out of their mouth is they apologize to the person that's sitting in front of me. They, they immediately go and say, I, may, I did this person wrong, Phil, and I need to say this. I'm not asking for forgiveness. But what I am telling you is I did do I did do this individual wrong. I've had souls come through and tell me to tell the individual, I don't love you. I don't care for you. I never liked you. I've never did this. And I, that was all on me. I was the bad parent or I was the bad sibling because I was struggling with something. But had the soul have come through and said, I tell them I love you, you would never identify with that because the person never told you they loved you throughout your life. So they're always going to behave that's how you can tell somebody's doing a reading. They're always going to behave in the manner that they you remember them in. They're not going to come through all holy and all blessed and all of these things. So it doesn't work that way, guys. And as much as everybody wants it to, um, to work that way, it's it, um, it doesn't. Let me see. So somebody just asked me, do, do humans, I'm sorry, do angels take human forms? Yes. So actually, here's my second experience with an angel, Brandon. Thank you for bringing this up. And I'm going to say this. So I'm in San Francisco or somewhere in California. I'm like 19 or 20 years old. Um, San Francisco at that time to me was just, whoa, you know, this, I'm not a city guy. But anyway, there was this alleyway and there was this guy sitting on the end of the alleyway. And 
he had some sort of sign and I gave him money and the people with me says why would you give that you know that homeless person money and I says because I hope one day I'm never in the same position mm -hmm. and we both turned around there's three of us we all turned around into the same alleyway that person wasn't there it wasn't like they could have darted off to the left or darted off to the right or went into the crowd it was just the four of us and all three of us looked at each other in this complete panic. Now remember, back then my gift was still evolving. I was young, so I couldn't even explain it myself, but I instantly knew it was an angel. So angels do take human forms. Angels do come in, in characters to prevent you from doing things. I, I, angels come in form of police officers and, 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 and uh, EMS and many different ways where I've been told where people are pulled out of burning cars and they felt the presence, but the person woke up and, and wasn't there. So yes, um, so I hope that that defines that. Can you define what God is? Okay, so let me see if I can define what God is in the best of my ability. Again, this is Phil's knowledge of what I've experienced over the 20 plus years of being a medium. God is a universal power. All roads lead to Rome. I've, ne neither see God, I've neither seen God as male or female or even as a being, meaning like a physical form. I've only seen and felt this incredible sense of love from the other side. Meaning that when I, when they're, see what happens is when they come through, they, they, tear, they make a, a rip in the veil. And all of a sudden behind them, I get to see where they're coming from. So it's like when someone opens their front door to you, you get to see what, how they, they've designed their house behind them, even though you haven't walked into their house. So the sensation that I get and that everybody gives me, Phil, is this is beautiful, this is peaceful, this is fantastic, this is all of this, even though I know my family's grieving. So my experience with God is it is the creation of, of everything and anything but not in the biblical sense. And that's the best way I can describe it. I Listen, I was born Irish Catholic, so I should be going along with the, all of this. But all I can tell you is every time, and I'm in this office uh, six days a week, every time the other side opens up a door, that's all I see. I've never witnessed negative. I've never seen people yelling behind another person and, you know, and having a fight or anything like that. So it's essential um, how that we know that the other side is nothing but pure love but you do get to, you you still have to go through your sense of looking what you did and what you didn't do and then there's souls that have crossed over guys that um have evolved so much meaning that they're old souls that they just passed they're just passing through to pass on more wisdom to us to help us here on earth so i hope that that answered the question um what was another question here I have different opinions of what God is and about the fact it exists. Well, listen, many people argue with me. Does God, no, they don't argue with me because we don't have time to argue, but we're asking, you know, does God exist? Is God not real? You know, but listen, all I know is there's this, there's this power. I don't know what happens or, or why it takes place. Another question I want to, want to answer before I run out of time here is how can I become a medium? And my sarcastic answer is a lot of trauma. But I don't say that to people. So I have no idea because this has only been first, first nature to me. Like people, for the pe couple of things I want to say is for people that email me and they say, Phil, I'm experiencing, um, you know, psychic images and all of these things. Can you help me? I truly can't because one, I don't have time. And two, to train somebody how to use their ability would just be an, an enormous amount of time. But can you make yourself a medium? I don't know. Does everyone have psychic ability? Absolutely. You're always in tune to the energy around you. You may know it or not know it. Like when you think of somebody, boom, they call you. I was just about, I, like my friends, I was going to text somebody, a text just immediately comes through. But beyond that there, that's our sense of self where we're connected to the universal power. So for me to see beyond that, meaning to see souls and things like that, it's... um. I don't know why it happens. All I know is that I was born with this. I wasn't knocked on the head or anything like that. So it's only first nature to me. That's why when people ask, do you turn this off? No, it would be like you walking outside with your eyes closed. Like you just simply wouldn't do that. Are our guides and family members are strangers to us? So are guides strangers to you? Yes. So as I said before, let's say you're in med school, you're going to have a guide that was once a doctor. So if you're going to be a dentist, blah, blah, blah. If you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to have a guy that was once a lawyer. If your family member was a lawyer, then that guy will help you through law school or whatever the situation may happen. So 
Um, but as far as can I help you with your psychic abilities, that's not me. There's lots of people out there and I'm actually going to put a new page up on my website to recommend other people. So I saw uh, people saying that they want to schedule an appointment. Guys, if you want to schedule an appointment with me, my available calendar for the rest of the year is online. You just go on to philquinn.com. You type in the date that you're looking for and that's all I have. Um, as far as these Friday night groups go, I just posted them so they're going to sell out fast. If you want the whole group for yourself, buy all the tickets right then and there and um, so on and so forth. So hi Jasper. And the other thing is too, um, I just want to end it. So as far as our psychic abilities go, I want to tell you all this. If you have a psychic sense, if you have this intuition sense, never ever go against it because it never ever will lead you astray. Your heart will, your head will, your gut never will because that is your immediate connection to the other side. So, and if you're connected to the other side, you're never going to go astray. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope I answered the top 10 questions that I always get or a lot of people give me and that this has helped you all. I will be back next Thursday. Again, anybody who wants to be part of my groups, they're on my new website. Anybody that wants to schedule an appointment, just go right online and do it rather than send me an email because your spot could be gone very quickly. So, and Corrine, I will be in, talk, I'll be in touch with you soon. And Jasper, I can't wait to see you when you come back, honey. And thank you all. Have a wonderful, hot next week.